Kyokyoku Tiger Heli is the latest release in M2's Shot Triggers line and the first of their Toplan Arcade Garage series through which they intend to release all the arcade games Toplan ever made. Previous Shot Triggers releases have all been absolutely excellent with both M2 and the Shot Triggers label having become bywords for quality and that reputation is enhanced further here with a feature rich package that runs perfectly. However, while previous releases such as Esperade, which was dedicated to a single phenomenal game, or Alesta Collection, which gave us a host of old Alesta games, as well as a new entry in the series, while all these have been absolute no-brainers to recommend, the way the, this release is being handled has caused a bit of confusion among some people considering a purchase, and I totally understand why. I'm confused and I own the damn thing. So before we look at any of the games on offer here, first let's take a look at the package and what you will or won't be getting if you do make a purchase. The most important thing to know is that there are a total of four distinct games available as part of this volume. The main event is unarguably 1987's Kyukyoku Tiger, also known as Twin Cobra, a vertically scrolling shooter that's a seminal title for both Toplan and the shmup genre in general. The second game is 1985's Tiger Heli, which was Twin Cobra's predecessor, and is significant for being Tone Plan's first foray into shooter territory. The third game is Get Star, otherwise known as Guardian, a side-scrolling action game from 1986, and the final game is Teki Paki, a falling block puzzle game released in 1991. Further to this, as you'll have been able to guess from the alternate names floating around, many of these received slightly altered releases in Japan and internationally, and the two shmups were both ported to consoles, with most of these variations being available as part of this volume, but what you get will depend on precisely how and what you buy. The good news for physical fans is, if you pick up the boxed version of this release, you have nothing to worry about. Everything is included with all the different versions of Twin Cobra, Tiger, Tiger Heli and Get Start on cart, and the box containing a download code for Tekipaki if you're going digital. There is a main release, which I believe includes the arcade versions of Twin Cobra and Tiger Heli, and then a separate DLC package that contains the console versions and Get Start. As far as I'm aware, these can only be purchased separately. There is no digital deluxe version equivalent to the physical, meaning I'm not sure that Tekipaki is available at all to those going digital. It also means if you only want to play Get Star, you're going to have to pony up for the whole shebang, which, yeah, I mean, isn't great if you just want to play Get Star. So yeah, a bit confusing regarding who should get what, and of course, the fact this package sees a mix of shmups and other genres only muddies the waters further, and does leave me wondering somewhat why things have been done this way. However, done this way, these things have been, and these are the games we have, so let's take a quick look at each in turn before focusing on the main release Twin Cobra. First up, let's look at the two non-shmups, starting with Teki Paki. This one actually caught me a little off guard as I didn't think it looked like much more than a random Tetris clone from screenshots. But in actual fact, it's a unique and rather fun little spin on the falling block formula. All blocks come in the same shape and your aim is not to create lines, but rather join up sections of colour in chains of five or above to make them disappear. The main differentiator here is that, to quote Aristotle, Tekipaki abhors a vacuum, meaning that any blocks that overhang empty space will separate and fall down alone. This makes for an interesting system and overall the game offers a fun little distraction, although for me personally, little more than that. Get Star or Guardian comes in two arcade versions and sees you control an astronaut as you cross various dangerous planetary surfaces and dispatch the alien enemies with punches and kicks. I'll be honest, I find this a little hard to get into, and to be even more honest, I don't really care that much that it's here at all. I'm aware some people may be very excited for this one, but to me it's a somewhat strange decision to have it included in this pack, as is the inclusion of Teki Paki, and it doesn't really add too much to things. Both of these games, while having the usual screen filters etc, do not offer the same wealth of options M2 usually serve up, and they come across very much as little bonus items rather than main reasons why many people might buy this package. The two shmups on the other hand, are probably where the real interest lies for most of you. Both have arcade versions, console versions, and newly created super easy versions, 
which in this case are of far more importance than they have been in previous Shot Triggers releases. Tiger Heli is the first game, and while it may initially seem basic and even a little ugly to look at by today's standards, it's certainly an interesting game from a historical standpoint. In it you control a rather slow moving helicopter and notably it was the first shmup to use the now almost standard big but limited bomb system. In an interesting little visual trick you don't have to rely on a bomb stock number on screen to know how many bombs you have, with the bombs being attached to either side of your helicopter and visible at a glance. You can also collect two side pods, these coming in the form of mini helicopters, to increase your firepower either straight forward or at a 90 degree angle to your ship. You're going to need these because your main shot is really rather puny and only extends roughly half the length of the screen. This coupled with your slow movement speed and enemy bullets that almost all track your movement make this a pretty unforgiving and frustrating experience at times, and one that's going to take a lot of practice not just if you want to 1cc it, but just to get really any sort of fun out of it at all beyond the first stage. Fortunately, M2 have added a new super easy mode, and the most significant thing this does is speed up your movement, making it feel a lot more approachable to just sit down and play, with the increase in speed feeling almost freeing after the sluggish movement of the original. I'm not remotely ashamed to admit that this is the mode I've spent most of my time with, although it does make things a little bit too easy, and it would be nice to have had a more happy medium that would make the game speedier but still challenging. There is a further customizable mode, and although I always think it's best to have things set up so there is a level playing field, these added options really do elevate the game and make it far more fun to play than just a straight up port of the arcade game would have been. Tiger Heli is short at just four stages, and the visuals are of the rather uninspired military type common at the time. Stages do not culminate in boss fights, but instead just kind of end with you landing on a helipad, and even with the modern enhancements, it still feels pretty rough around the edges. Although nowhere near as rough as the infamously poor NES port, which is also included here. To be honest, I feel like Tiger Heli probably isn't something I or that many people would have shown a huge amount of interest in if it was a standalone title in the vein of Arcade Archives. However, what it is very good for is showing quite how staggeringly far Toaplan leapt and bound in the intervening years between the release of Tiger Heli and Twin Cobra. Now, if you get this collection and play Twin Cobra, it's very much worth keeping in mind that this game released in 1987, just two years after Tiger Heli and three years before the first Raiden. It might feel old fashioned to those of us who've got used to playing Esperade and Mushihime Sama over the last couple of years, but for something exactly contemporary with uh, 1943, which you can check out on the Capcom Arcade Stadium, you'll find that when you come back, you will likely be wowed at quite how modern Twin Cobra does feel for its time. It is a sequel, and therefore does share a lot with Tiger Heli. Although the uninspired military setting is back, the visuals do so show a marked jump from just two years previously. The soundtrack is also pretty superb, and your ship's regular movement speed has been increased to something that will make modern players feel far more instantly at home. Your bombs have been souped up, although they aren't screen clearing, and instead create an explosion of limited diameter which you will have to be careful to make sure is actually protecting you from incoming enemy fire. These bombs are not instant either, and you can't really use them as last ditch panic saves because they won't hit the ground and go off in time. Instead you really need to plan when and where to use them in advance, making them more of an offensive option than they usually are in most games now. The pod system of shot upgrades is gone, replaced with four different shot types, these being a kind of standard red forward shot, a blue spread shot, focused and powerful green lasers and a weak yellow shot that fires in the four cardinal directions. You change between these by picking up floating power ups dropped by destroyed bonus helicopters, with the power ups floating around the screen and changing colour as they do so. There are also actual power up power ups that increase your shot power through 10 levels as well as additional bombs. Regardless of your power level however, mercifully gone is Tiger Heli's half length shot, and even from the start you'll feel far more powerful than in the original game. 
However, that sense of power likely won't last for too long as Twin Cobra remains a punishing affair, especially in its Japanese arcade version, which sets you back to checkpoints after each death. In the international version, this is changed to instant respawns, but beyond the first couple of stages, this gets real hard, real fast, and again, I have to admit, if it weren't for M2's Super Easy Edition, I'd have been seriously struggling to make much progress with this one. Although I should say, I have also spent a lot of time with the arcade version here, as it is still a lot of fun, despite the ramped up challenge. Twin Cobra also brings in proper end of stage bosses, although they do just appear with very little ado and aren't quite as different from regular enemies as the upper screen filling behemoths players were soon to get used to. At 10 stages, this is a long game. And with that working out to over 45 minutes for a complete playthrough, it is, in my opinion, overly lengthy. Particularly since the game does not progress visually in any interesting way, with the backgrounds of the second five stages simply being rejigged versions of the first five. In fact, unless you're an absolute expert on the game, I don't think anyone would really be able to tell which stage is which, as they mostly all feature the same standard mix of fairly characterless water, desert trees and concrete military installations all jumbled up across their length. One thing that I personally really don't like about Twin Cobra is the long wait times at the start of each run and as you transition between stages. Each time you start it is a good 20 plus seconds before you actually have control of your ship and from defeating a stage end boss to firing your first shot in the following stage takes over 30 seconds with most of this being taken up with a painfully slow animation of your chopper descending to an aircraft carrier, then reascending moments later. That said, this is clearly the pick of the bunch in terms of the games on this package, and while it may not be up there with Esperade or Battle Garaga, so as to have deserved its own single game shot triggers release, it's really what this package is all about, and how much you want to play this will be the biggest contributing factor to any decision to purchase the collection or not. It also has a crazy amount of versions with NES, Mega Drive and PC Engine ports in addition to the various arcade versions. As you'll have been able to see from the footage I've been showing, M2's gadget system is back for both Twin Cobra and Tiger Heli, and it provides a host of useful little gauges and statistics to glance at if you ever get a moment to pull your eyes away from the main screen action. Of particular use in this case is the map on the right hand side, which displays secret power up locations and the positions of incoming bonus ships. There's also the usual plethora of visual options, customizable controls, save states, online high scores separated by mode, and downloadable replays for those looking to learn from the best. Although, as with all Shot Triggers releases on Switch so far, this is a Japanese-only game and the menus are not translated. There's also an arcade challenge mode that breaks each of these two games up into smaller sections for players to practice using different option setups, and there are additional sound and visual galleries, as well as detailed play records for each game. In other words, all the bells and whistles that we've come to expect from M2, and whatever you might think of the games on offer here, there was never any doubt that this release was always going to have been handled in the most impressive way imaginable by the boys from Chiba. However, unlike previous Shot Triggers releases, that doesn't make this an easy, no-brainer recommend to anyone and everyone interested in shmups. The games collected here make for an odd bunch. If you do happen to have been waiting for a falling block puzzle game, an obscure side-scrolling action arcade game and two seminal vertical shmups all on one cart, then sure, you should be all over this. If you're mainly interested in only Get Star or only Techie Packy, however, you're kind of shit out of luck. Most people I'd imagine will be somewhere in the middle, with some of these games appealing very much, and some being kind of unimportant filler that doesn't add much value. And it's really going to be a very individual decision as to whether this is worth a purchase or not. For me, I am pretty happy with what I've got here and I would give the package an 8 out of 10. But I can easily see some people finding the opportunity to compare and contrast its array of console ports as something endlessly fascinating. While others may end up just being confused why they're looking at 10 versions of the same game, when all they really want to know is where Truxton is. 
Next up in the Total Plan Arcade Garage series, by the way, will be a collection featuring Flying Shark and Fire Shark, which I imagine is going to end up being put together in a very similar way to this release, with a couple of non-shmups thrown in alongside the main events. And I would love to hear what other people's thoughts are on this. Are you loving the chance to explore these more obscure little potential gems from Toa Plan? Or are you just wishing they'd just hurry up and give you Batsugun? Let us know below how you're feeling about these releases as I'm really, really curious to see what the general response is. And as ever, thank you all for watching. See you next time. Cheers.